Hello, welcome to date. We've got massive news. It's just been updated that we're going to have the new development de developmental update in Football Manager 25. So we're going to quickly run through some of the things. Uh, hopefully you've seen this now. I'm going to put the link in the video description. But yeah, this is massive. So if we quickly run through all the information here. So we've got Miles saying, obviously, that we've got finding the right level of transparency is tr important. Many of, many of you have been with us for 30 years. Uh, some of obviously others have joined along the way. Um, this is especially relevant with Football Manager 25 marking a bit new beginning in many respects. Why the right level of transparency? Well, there are things we just can't discuss, which is fair enough. Uh, I continue the theme of transparency as promised with a quarter two update, which I have been thinking has come in this week. Um, so that's great. We've kicked off this important time. Love the graphics, by the way. Today, however, I want to tell you what's happening on console, PC, touch and mobile. We'll oh, say touch and mobile follow on further. So the next era. Okay. So the next chapter is, is barking the biggest tech change in over 20 years. Moving to Unity is an undertaking. It has given us a huge, in incredible building blocks to create new foundations and lock potential. Power of for, for future visions and power of future vision for Football Manager with enhanced graphical fidelity and more efficient development processes in the future. And with more experience, it will lead to faster creation and implementation of game features and design tweaks. That's really important. So we're on about getting new game feature, much quicker, much better. Can't fault that. Okay. So it's the next 20 years. So they're saying this is a, what they're going to be doing as an, uh, a starting point. So it's going to be this for the next 20 years. This is how they envis envisage a future. Okay. So what would we do? Would we do this the same way if we had our time again? This is a question they keep asking themselves. So if we have a quick look now, we are going to lose touchline shouts. Touch and shout is the most used feature that won't be included in FM25. Uh, won't be back for the foreseeable future. Shouts in the series have been there for many years, and to be frank, he's never been happy with them. A shout should that happen instantly, but they only come into effect after the ball's gone out of play. Also, wasn't clear how long the shout lasted for, and for the time being, shouts are gone. So that's fine. Social media, I, I, I sort of agree with that. I think touch and shouts. Yeah, you know, you want to cancel it. Like, oh, no, no, it's good. It's good. Quick, I don't want to be angry. And you go, quick, cancel it. Yeah, yeah, I, I sort of get that. I, I sort of agree. I agree. Touchline shouts always seemed OP. You could, like, fire up. My only concern is in console, we, we, don't, we don't even have team talk. So touch and shouts were really good for a start of the match. Um, social media and data chalkboard. To optimise the UI and user experience, we've taken out the bespoke social media screen, which... To be fair, do you really use? I use it occasionally, but does anyone actually use it? Um, all the key information from this will still appear in other game areas and supporters are still an integral part of the game. <coughs> Excuse me. With the data used in football continually evolving and developing, we've also fought hard about how it is displayed in Football Manager. This is great. So this is data visualization. For, me, for most of the existing data metrics and visualizations will be in 25. And we're already working on further visualizations that will be added in future editions of FM. However, the chalkboard, which was additional in, in additional individual and team access data via prior profiles, has been removed. With the introduction of data in recent years, which is much better at presenting the analytical data to you, the chalkboard became superfluous and its usage dropped to, from 10% down to 1%. That's interesting because a lot of the money ball data we're using at the moment in console is now going to be, you know, I'm doing this money ball approach and that's going to be gone. The chalkboard actually was that information hidden. Um, I think it's just people weren't aware of how to use it properly. So that's interesting. Create a club. We know that this is our most popular mode away from career mode with 5% of you. So only 5% use creator mode. That's, that's, that's interesting. Um, we can't improve Creator Club experience to the level we're looking for before this year's launch, so we've decided not to launch it, rush it. Instead, it'll be brought back in 26 with lots of changes and improvements. So we're losing Creator Club for a year. Okay, that's that's interesting. Um, obviously, we've been trying to use the editor in my console videos to say, well, we can create a club to do some editing, which you can't do in console. So, again, that's going to be one of the things we're going to lose in console, but maybe they're going to change stuff um, moving forward. Versus mode, we know that people who do play versus tend to do so multiple times. However, it's only 0.5% of the audience. Well, the audience is 10 million pounds. That's still five, what was that? 
fave interest? Is it fave? Yeah. All right, let me do my maths. 50% is fave mil. So five percent would be five hundred grand. So it's about fifty grand. Okay, that's that's quite low actually. I thought it'd be more than that. We haven't started redesign the version mode yet. We do like it, so that means it's staying, but it may be superseded by something else or repeat returning in a completely different form. Interesting. Challenge mode. Part of console touch and mobile series, challenge mode is currently scheduled to completely be revamped in Football Manager 26 or 27. Interesting. Uh, it was popular when first launched, but its, it's use away from mobile has dropped dramatically over the last few years and now we're played by less than, again, 0.5% users. So what they're trying to do is react to what the audience is actually doing. In console, touch and mobile, it's not well used. So they are moving away from that. I think one of the things with challenge mode is I think it, if you could create your own challenges, if you could create, you know, create community challenges that might be an interesting way of doing it but to hear that they're going to completely revamp football manager 26 and 27 with create uh with challenge mode is really interesting huh? okay so they're comp debating how we'll come back to ensure it returns with the best and most immersive possible experience possible so they're going to take challenge mode away we're going to lose create the club So it looks like what they're going to do is concentrate on the original format of these games and then create a club, challenge mode versus mode. They're going to look to tweak it, or obviously, as it says here, versus mode is going to get rid of. So challenge mode and create a club are going to be revamped in the in, as a big feature, I'm assuming, in 26, but I'll create all 27. So that's quite interesting. Fantasy drafts will not be playable from day one, but will return much improved later in the cycle alongside the main data update so we're talking here in january so we're not okay so the mid cycle feature releases are something that will become more regular for the series moving forward well that's good so we're going to get more updates we're going to get more information that's really good when we first envision visit i can't get my words up when we first envision envisioned uh fantasy draft mode we saw its potential as an esport which you know it is i mean back during lockdown streamer showdowns you know, it's all over Twitch. It's good. It's quite good. And a few tournaments have been running here and there in various disguises. We've already made a decision to remove it from 25 from day one, when we had a very interesting reach up from someone in the esports space. With two decades of organising tournaments, got in touch. We have therefore decided to partner with FIFA E, the FIFA esports division, on an invitational World Cup of Football Manager, which takes place in Liverpool from August 29th to September 24, using tw tw Football Manager 24. 24 players will contest. That'll be interesting. I wonder who's in that because that's not really being talked about much. That must be right, really, you know, they must, that's going to be coming out soon, surely. Okay, so FIFA, which is what they were talking about with the Premier League, don't forget that FIFA was helping with the Premier League. Maybe the FIFA Esports is going to be getting more licenses for Football Manager, which is great if you think about it. So that's really interesting. Um, okay. Roll the FIFA World Cup of Football Manager using new draft involved in. Everyone involved is keen on generating first learnings and to build solid ground. This is really cool. Really cool. Oh, there you go. Look, and if you want to join, you click that link. Oh, and it's taking you to Instagram. I mean, I'm not on Instagram. But there you go. You can you can sign up. That's really good. Okay. Oh, what's going on my emails? All right, okay. Really good. Okay. So they're going to do longer competitions. That's good. We're going to have more. That's really cool. That's really cool. A new UI for a new era. Okay, now we're getting into the bones. How long have we been going for now? I'm not sure. But now onto a major new change in experience from day one of FM25. I spoke earlier about how the UI will be very different. While we know how vital it is to get this right, it's very important for the user experience. Okay. Same is true of crafting a design that's platform agnostic, enabling ease of play, whether you've got a mouse, keyboard, controller, or a touchscreen. So this is quite big in tackling this challenge and we are working very closely with engineers at unity to adapt their engine to give us more flexibility and dynamics that we need from a ui perspective we'll be talking about this journey more in the unite event in september covering more of the technical details while we work together to make the fm25 ui a reality of course we'll share most of that you with you shortly after the conference so we're going to get another update then in september or maybe october but for now we wanted to give you a first taste of the upcoming changes oh let's have a look here then Okay, so the UI UX is uh, driven by what we call tile and card. So they go, oh, so tile and card. So instead of having a profile, maybe we're going to have more modded 
different things. Okay. A tide is a panel of information with different, multiple different states, like you have, I suppose, with the drop downs from the same amount of information to larger cards, which contain more material. Our design team wanted to create something that would help build a sense of exploration for each player to reveal a depth and detail in Football Manager. In this system, the tiles are a way of building curiosity by providing a snapshot of information while clicking through into cards rewards your interest in further details. Interesting. Tiles come in various different sizes that we all call states. So this is this is so that we can use information appropriately in various just different screens and scenarios. Below is an example of player form. Okay. So you've got the last five matches. I like that. Last five matches. It gives you a breakdown. It says you won or lost. He's got six goals, two assists, like that. I mean, it's, it's still similar to what we're experiencing and what we're used to. Okay. Oh, okay. Not saying. This is a design files and not a game build. Okay. And then in the screenshot below, you can see what happens when you click on the file, Tom, and he opens a card up with more information. Nice. Oh, I like this. So it's taken, if you remember, if you look at form, it's taken the form and applying it to the, you know, the last five games. It's quite nice. I like that. That's quite intuitive. Look, you got you. Yeah. Well, you got one goal in the 12th minute, two assists in 34 and 40 seconds. He got taken off. So it's, it's taking what's happened in the game and making it a bit more visual, giving him an 8.3. He scored one goal. He played advanced forward. That's interesting. And who did he play then against next? Bright then. Oh, look, he got the low. I've just read this. He got the club logos as well. Advanced forward, one, one assist, two goals. Okay. Didn't get taken off. Had a nine. Lost against Brentford. Got subbed. He had a 6.2. He had a shocker. And he got injured. Wasn't a big injury because then he played two days later against Bournemouth. Okay. And then he was playing as a poacher. So, ah, oh, there you go. Look, role change. Under the leafless. Poacher, poacher, poacher. Interesting. He's a star player. He's got 22 goals in 28 games. I wonder if who that's about then. Is that Havertz or is that going to be Jesus or have they got someone else? This design reduces the volume of screens in game, making navigation easier without compromising the detail. Less walls of text is a good thing, right? He says 2,000 words in. <laughs> oh, what's this? Goodbye inbox. Hello portal. What? Another facet of our URI has been studying the constant evolution in the way people interact, communicate, and consume information. Historically, the screen that people spend the most time is the inbox. Yeah, you click in, you're going next, next, next. Okay, yeah. Oh, you're going right, right trigger, yeah. Essentially, you're in-game email for a while. This has felt quite old school with more modern managers that spend more time on their phone. So, welcome to your portal. The portal will be a richer window to the wider footballing universe. It will give you far better tools to develop your story through the agenda and messages sections, but also deliver you more insight into what's happening elsewhere via news and matches. Okay, so we've got rid of the email system where you go, I wonder if you still got to click everything, but it's more intuitive. It looks a bit like an iPad app, if you think, where you can, you know, you'll click portal, squad, recruitment on the pitch. That's interesting. Club profile. Okay. That's interesting to have tiles rather than click menus. Okay. Finally, I want to show you one of them. Okay, the new tile in the card system. This is a new screen. You'll be able to watch your match highlights. Ah, 2D's there. We got 2D. We kept 2D, look. Okay, Man City, you're playing 4 2 <laughs> I'm playing for Ant He's been a bit. Okay. Okay. That's a so instead of having that overlay, they've redesigned it. So now you're having a tile system. So instead of being that overlay where you're getting that really limited information as a build, in the game build, you're having it now. I like that. Yeah, I like that. Okay, what else is it now? On? Let's see. So you got your subs here. You got five subs. Three tell. Oh god, it tells you then. Three stoppages. You're gonna ignore the tackle device. Okay. All right. Okay. We know what these represent a big sh shift. I don't mind that. I like that. How can you help? Okay. We want help to validate. Oh, sign me up for this. In the coming weeks, FMFC members with an initial reasonable travel facility will receive an email to surface their interest and availability to come into our studios to help continue testing. Depending on the interest and uptake, we may well cast a net further. Yes, please, sign me up. We're planning to run this for September into October. If you're not a member, please subscribe now. Further taste of what's to come. Thank you for your time reading so far. That's almost it. But a few more snippets. Oh, right, okay. The release date will be confirmed in early September with pre-orders at the same time. We'll be unveiling new gameplay elements after pre-order. As you can see from what we showed you and have already revealed, there's going to be a lot to dive into. Make sure you're signed up to the... Okay. In addition, a few other things. We're looking at an official Football Manager podcast in collaboration with a big player in the audio space and using an external host and production team. The podcast where you're looking... Okay, so there's going to be a podcast. That'll be interesting. 
Oh, right, okay. Well, that's it. That's miles. Okay. What's already been revealed? Is that the stuff from last year? Yeah, that's just the extra bit there. So we already know about the women's football and everything else, but that's that's really interesting. Let me know your thoughts. I think it's great. I think there's some really interesting bits there. I think it's a shame we're going to lose some of the features, but if that means that they're going to concentrate more on the gameplay in the original mode and getting that nailed down, I think that's more important than, you know, using a lot of time on elements that people aren't using and maybe revamping it. Maybe we start looking at whether or not they go back to remember Football Manager Live where you can have a bit, you know, there's 10 million people and you use that online feature. I like it. I do like it. Uh, let me know your thoughts. Drop us a like and subscribe below if you stayed along this long. This long. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, take care. Bye-bye.